the ugly truth about oil filters they don't want you to know. And this is actually, this is a video I should have done a long time ago, but it never occurred to me. It did after I saw a video last night or the night before. Um, and this is, it was on a popular channel, and they wiped out the cam in a small block Mopar. And as they were surveying the damage, though, they had wiped out the lifter, I should say. And as they're surveying the damage, you see that the lifter wore right through the bottom. And they made a comment that everything in the engine should be okay because they had a good oil filter on it. Oh, okay. Oil filters are not what you think they are, or they're not what they're supposed to be. Because they only filter under certain circumstances. And those circumstances are under the mildest conditions. Now this filter right here, this is just a generic, it's just an off-brand filter. I cut it open to use this as an illustration, but you have to understand that these screw-on type of oil filters all have the same basic components, the same way all engines have pistons and all engines have crankshafts. Well, all spin-on filters have these same basic components, so it's irrelevant. And when we talk about, when they talk about oil filter quality, they're always talking about the media involved. So the media would be this stuff right here, which is supposed to catch whatever particles, impurities, chunks of metal, whatever it happens to come through. And there are different levels, different qualities of that media. But what nobody ever bothers to tell you is that that media is only in use under very certain circumstances. Because this oil filter, like every other type of spin-on filter you find, has two bypass systems in them. And any time you're over, now this, this ranges between five and 25 pounds of oil pressure, which for the vast majority of high performance cars is all the time, the bypass is open. And the oil is not being forced through this media. Instead, the oil is being bypassed. So to show you how this works, at the top of the filter here, we have these small holes. And these small holes are what is being fed by the pump. So the pump is forcing oil into the filter. And these holes have a one-way flapper valve, which is this rubber piece right here. So the oil pump pushes the oil through those holes. It gets past this piece of rubber. And then, in theory, it goes down the side of the filter between the canister and this inner piece and it gets forced through the media and that's where the filtering takes place. But at the bottom of the filter, I guess this is an old filter, I just cut this open real quick because I had it on hand, so there's nothing, nothing significant about this particular filter. But at the bottom of this assembly is this spring. And this spring is the bypass. So what happens is now, as the oil is being forced through these top holes, once the pressure reaches a predetermined amount, and on most filters it's around 20 PSI, the pressure actually pushes down on the spring. And when the pressure pushes down on the spring, the oil is then allowed to bypass and go straight to the engine, which is what that big hole is right there. So do you see what's happening here? When you first start the engine, let's just say, for example, and I'll use like typical numbers. You start an engine and it's cold and it's got 40 pounds of, of oil pressure. Well, that 40 pounds of oil pressure is working against this spring over here and it's causing the bypass action to happen. So no, fil no, no oil is being forced through the filter element. Now as the engine warms up and let's say the hot idle drops down to 20 pounds. 18, 20 pounds like that. Well then at that point, the bypass isn't being activated and all of the oil that's coming through these outer holes is going, oh, excuse me, is going through the media and it's being filtered as it should be. As soon as you give it gas and the oil pressure goes up to 30, 40, 50 pounds, whatever it is on your engine, the bypass is pushing the media away, creating this gap right here. And now the oil is going straight from here to here. Zero filtration. So if you're going down a drag strip, let's just say, and you've got 30 or 40 pounds of oil pressure or 60 pounds of oil pressure, trust me when I tell you, there is no oil being filtered. Zero oil is being filtered. All of that oil is, is 
being diverted because the spring compresses, all that oil is being diverted from these outer holes to the inner hole and the engine is getting unfiltered oil. So if you wipe out a cam or a bearing or anything like that, yes, you may get some, you may see some, you cut open a filter, you may see some metal in there, there's no question about it. But the vast majority of that metal, while the engine was under load, bypassed the filter completely and went straight into the engine. You won't necessarily see it in the oil pan, but you will see it gathered up inside the engine in the oil galleys and every place else. There's a second, there's a second bypass on this, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But that's the main fallacy about oil filters. People are always talking about the quality of the media. You know, how efficient is the media? It has nothing to do with it. When this thing is under pressure, the media is being bypassed and that oil is just circulating right through the motor like it wasn't even there. The second bypass on these is found at the bottom. That's this little jammy right here. And this is here basically for people who, who don't bother changing their oil filters and the media becomes clogged. Well, this allows that oil, instead of, instead of just being trapped there, it'll let, this opens up and it allows the oil to come through the center and out to the rest of the engine. But all of these spin-on filters have two bypasses, but that main bypass, the, the spring that's at the bottom of the canister, that's the one. Anything, and some of these engines, some of the oil filters, you notice that manufacturers will spec different oil filters. So, like for instance, you could have two or three oil filters that have the same diameter and they have the same, the same threads, but they'll be different numbers. And that's because the bypass spring is rated at different values. So like for instance, an engine with, uh, that uses a very thin oil with variable valve timing will use an oil pressure bypass that starts at five, six, seven pounds because the VVT system needs to operate at those lower oil pressures. It's a placebo effect. You're not actually filtering your oil when the oil needs to be filtered the most. This happens passively and it happens at low RPM, low pressure, low stress situations. It'll do some filtering, but beyond that, they're all the same. They all bypass and send the oil right through. If you really want to protect your engine, I've used Oberg oil filters in the past. Those are an aluminum housing. I don't have one here to show you guys, but it's an aluminum housing. It's a two-piece housing, and it has a replaceable uh, screen or cleanable screen in the center. It's like you, you buy the filter once and you just clean it every use. They work really good for applications where you may get chunks of metal where you can expect to find some bearing issues or, or camshaft issues. An engine that is, is an extreme performance engine that's known to put some metal in the oil during normal use, those Olberg filters are your best bet. But for if you're dealing with a screw-on canister style filter, I'm telling you, it's only filtering when you don't really need it. When you really need it, that spring is forcing, is, is, is just, it's stopping the action through the filter. So, there are also these early engines, when, before they got to these universal spin-on canister type of filters, engines like small block Chevys, for instance, the early Chrysler Hemis, they actually had an oil filter bypass uh, uh, channel that would either be in the block or it would be screwed into the block as an adapter. So that if the canister got clogged, or the canister couldn't flow enough oil because think about it, you're trying to put a, 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 thick, a thick, heavy liquid through that fine media and get it filtered, you need some sort of bypass. So before they started with these more or less universal spin-on filters, they would actually incorporate a bypass system into either the block or an oil filter adapter. So. There you go. I hope you got something out of that. I know a lot of you guys are probably going to like lose sleep over this now. My oil filter doesn't work. It never worked. <laughs> it never worked. This isn't news. This is, but like I said, they don't want you to know this. Because, I mean, that's, it's just the truth. If you've got a race engine, something that only operates above 30 or 40 PSI, you might as well just, I mean, it, it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.